Welcome back guys. This is Python test driven development. Thank you so so much for coming back. And in this in the last videos we went through the problem statement, we broke it down, we uh, laid down the approach to how we would go about solving the problem. And in this video we are finally going to set up our GitHub repo and we are going to set up our development environment. So without further ado, Let's get started. So this is my GitHub repository. So one second. So this is my GitHub repository. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call it meet the family. And the description will be geek, geek trust meet the family, right? So this is going to be public. I'm going to initialize a readme file. The git ignore will be python git ignore and the license will be MIT license. Right? So now we've create we've created our repository and so that's it. We're going to clone this. and we're going to make a new file over here i'm going to call it meet the family let's go in then now we have all the files and if you see this the hidden file git ignore is also there right so now what we are going to do is we are going to create the virtual environment that we are going to code in. Now you might you uh, remember we had a tutorial on how to create virtual environment. So if you have not checked that out, be sure to check it out. I will make sure to leave the link in the description below. And so now let us create our virtual environment. We're going to, first of all, we'll make sure we're going to use Python 3. Also, one more thing is you might be thinking why I am using a virtual environment, right? Because I don't really have any dependencies to begin with. I am just using core Python. So the reason is basically when I type Python, I get Python 2.7. You see this? Yeah. Python 2.7. I want Python 3. I can definitely go with, uh, I can, can definitely type Python 3, but that's not what I really want to do. I just want to type Python and uh, I want to get it working. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual environment and the default Python in that virtual environment will be Python 3. So let me just see which Python uh, 3 I am using so this is the python 3 uh, location let me copy that and now uh, I'm just going to use make virtual sorry <laughs> environment minus p this and I'm going to call it meet the family right so now when I type python I get python 3 because this is the python 3 that meet the family virtual uh, this virtual environment is using right so now uh, after we've done that so what we're going to do is we're going to go to code and we have a blank file so uh, what I like doing guys is basically I like setting up Travis CI uh, I mean uh, if you don't know what Travis CI is Travis CI is a uh, continuous integration tool so what we do is we uh, list down all our repositories here let me just show it to you guys right Travis CI Zim95 that's me so let me just log in into Travis CI first so let me just show you what it is and I'll just uh, I'll show you my past code examples as well so that you guys know what Travis CI is all about so sub, to my surprise, I think I'm already logged in. So let me just sign in, sign in with GitHub. So 
so as you can see i have got two um, branches with me uh, two repositories with me over here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to be adding more repositories so this was an old uh, or should i say this was an old repository that i was working on which i left somewhere in between so i'm not going to <coughs> work on that but what happens is basically you have a github repository which you can import over here right so what you can do is you can import over here yeah, you saw me click the plus icon over here uh, I don't know if that's clear or not but this is the plus icon that you're going to click on and then what we're going to do is we're going to filter all of our repositories since I linked uh, since I am linked with github uh, I logged in with the github with my github account so what I'm going to do is I am going to filter all of my repositories and we just have this meet the family repository which I'm going to just click on only selected repositories and I'm going to select my repository which is meet the family you see that and now uh, you can basically select what repositories you want Travis to uh, link uh, together so I'm going to approve and install and now what I'm going to have is so let me just go to the dashboard and you can see now I have my meet the family uh, repository in Travis right so let me click on that and currently meet the family does not have any branches or build history or whatever right so that's all over to change so right now uh, since I since I hope all of you have git installed right uh, this is not a git tutorial so uh, I will try my best to go over all the commands and you will also understand along the way if you don't already know git that is most of you I, I, I think already know what git is and how git works so let us look at the status right this will tell us what branch we're on what's the status we're on branch master and our master is up to date with the origin so the log file says initial commit right this is the first thing that happens Sorry, and this is not the first thing that happens this is basically the first commit uh, that we made when we created the readme and uh, uh, the git ignore files and the license file right so now what we are going to do is it's considered best practice not to do anything on the master branch right we are going to branch out create a new branch and then we are going to uh, do everything on that branch right so let us just check out to uh, I'm going to call it develop usually we have develop feature name but since this is a small project and uh, I am the only developer that's working on it so I'm just going to call it develop right so now let us look at the branches we are on develop and there's the other branch master right so the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a Travis file Travis YAML file so what Travis does is Travis uh, since meet the family is now linked to Travis what we will be doing is um, the Travis file will basically uh, give Travis CI the instructions to build so the uh, what happens is whenever we make a push or push to our uh, repository over on github this will automatically get detected by Travis and it will start running all the instructions in the Travis YAML file so let us just create that YAML file real quick I doubt this is visible to you guys so I'm just going to increase the size so the file is called YAML you have to call it Travis.yaml because this is what uh, Travis will be looking for in your repository so let us just uh, write a basic Travis YAML file so language is going to be of course python we are also going to mention the version of python and the version that i want to use is 3.8.1 sorry that was supposed to be 1 since that is the version of python that i am using locally right 
so yeah where did it go yeah correct then we are going to install some uh, we, we don't really have requirements.txt so we are not going to install anything but i really want you guys to know how uh, real i mean how the flow of everything is so we are going to create a you know dummy requirements.txt file with nothing in it okay i know this goes against everything i've just said before <laughs> but just bear with me guys i uh, just want to show you guys how things would work so minus r requirements.txt so how requirements.txt would work is if you look at this if i uh, pip is the package manager if i do pip freeze it shows me all the dependencies that are installed in my in the in my uh, virtual environment basically or in any environment that i'm working on right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to install a linter for code linting uh, if you guys don't know what code linting means it is just uh, you know like maintaining uh, proper lines of uh, i mean the proper length of lines it can't uh, it can't be too long and it has to be properly formatted everything the format basically linting means formatting your code properly so that people can read it easily so it's considered a good practice to have a linter so and it will also show you guys how uh, you know how requirements.txt would work right so let me just install a linter called flake 8 we're going to use flake 8 guys so connecting flake 8 now if i do pip freeze you'll see flake 8 is in my requirements.txt right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pip freeze and whatever i get everything i'm going to put it into requirements.txt i'm sure most of you have seen the pipe this operator right whatever you print out on the console that will be basically written to the files so this has been done and now if you look at our requirements.txt we have all the requirements there so now uh, we have our installed txt and for now we are not going to um, execute any scripts that i will come into later uh, i mean i will come to that later on so now that we've done that, if you look at our git status, we have two untracked files, Travis YAML and requirements.txt. So let me just add, I don't think we need to look at the diff. We'll look at the diff later on so that you guys know what it is all about. Let us add all of it and let us commit. And the commit message will basic, uh, let us uh, just say we added requirements.txt and travis.yaml right so once we have done that and now you now you can see nothing has happened here right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to push origin since i am on develop the push to develop and that should basically start building okay uh okay wait guys so it will not really build anything because i don't have any build scripts right now right so i don't have build scripts right now so i'll come to that later i mean uh, let us just set this up right now once we have something called scripts over here and whatever we have in uh in the lines following the scripts will be executed by Travis YAML. It has detected the change, but it does not have anything to build right now. So with the that we have our development environment set up, and now in the next uh, videos we are going to write some code, guys. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please make sure to like, uh, comment, and subscribe, and please hit the bell icon as well if you really appreciate it would really you know like uh, give me a morale boost <laughs> uh, so guys thanks bye